work it, make it, do it, make sense. Thank you very much. I think I'm live. Can you hear me at the back? Splendid. Do you know that's one of my favourite chat up lines? That's a facility, if you said I had a beautiful body, well, you know, some years ago maybe. Anyway, I'm not Jose Talavera. I'm actually Andy Wyatt, who's Jose's boss, because uh, Jose is otherwise engaged today. But I'm just going to give you a very, very quick whistle stop tour of of the Perfecto platform and how you can use Perfecto to actually debug your code. So I'm showing you here Android Studio, but equally we, we can work with, with, um, with the Xcode IDE as well and iOS apps. So what you can see on the screen right now is a digital video stream taken from a real physical device. So we don't work with emulators at Perfecto, these are real devices and I've just basically taken the stream out of the actual skin. The skin's there to make it look like the device you're actually testing on. So this device, as I say, is in the cloud. It, it, in this case, it happens to physically be located. Whoops, let's put that one there. I brought my own Wi-Fi with me as well, because the one here is a bit oversubscribed. Um, I've got my own, um, th th this device here. You know, it happens to be physically located in, just on the outskirts of London at Staples Corner. And for example, if I was, for example, let me just launch, I'm just gonna show you a couple of things in here. So for example, if I was to launch Google Maps, because this is a real device, it's not rooted, it's not jailbroken, it can actually show you the location where it actually thinks it is. So it's telling me there that actually it's close to Brent Cross, which is, which is physically correct. And we've got a few little widgets and stuff that you can play with, like for example, um, the image injection. So I can pretend that I'm actually in, oh I don't know, let's pretend that we're in Berlin, Germany. So this goes away under the covers to Google, talks to Google, gets the GPS coordinates and injects it into the device. And then we should see it, <coughs> there you go, we now think we're in Berlin. So all of these facilities are available to you if, if you're writing a geo-sensitive app, you can test in this particular environment. So you don't actually have to jump on a plane. It's much nicer to travel to Berlin and do it locally, but your company funds might not actually stretch that far. So we've got lots of banks, lots of insurance companies, lots of travel companies as customers, and they use this facility quite heavily. Anyway, I'm not here to do a sales pitch on Perfecto. As I've said, this is, this is a real device. So what, what, what would you want to do if you're actually writing the code for your app in the IDE? So I've got a very simple calculator app here inside of, of, of the IDE. And it, literally what I'm gonna do, there's the code here. I'm gonna upload the app and show you it running um, with, with the, the debug point. So it's gonna launch the calculator. I'm going to click on one and then I'll step through the code to be able to show you the actual uh, digit appearing on the screen there. Now, for this to actually work, I need to create a link to that device. So right now, yes, I can control it and I can, I can run things like Selenium and Appium Automation against this particular device. But for me to actually use it from Android Studio, I would need it to be locally connected. So if I was to type in ADB devices, you can see there that there are no devices attached. Okay, so for me to actually remedy that, we need, need to use this thing here called DevTunnel. So what this is doing, it's punching out a connection from my machine here to the device that's in the cloud. So if you're inside a company network and it's highly secure, for example, oops, there we go, s tunnel server not running, fantastic. Don't you just love live demos? It's because I've been bringing it up and down all morning, probably. Let me just retry that just to see if that's gonna work. So you can actually punch, because you're punching out from the network, you're secure, <coughs> excuse me, your security architects, <coughs> sorry, got a frog in my throat, they'll be less bothered about that, okay? Now, if you're working in a situation where your app needs to talk to a secure internal server inside of your network, then what we can do, we can uh, basically create a VPN, an IPsec VPN tunnel between our private cloud dedicated just to you and your customer account and into to your, your company network. So we do this all the time for our large customers. Anyway, you can see here that I've actually got this tunnel established. So if I now type in ADB devices, you can see there that I've got this device ID connected, which starts 9886. So if I actually compare that with the information widget I've got here, I don't know if you can see that at the back there, but it starts 9886. So it's, it's the same device ID. So now it's like having, if you like, in this case, a 30, 30 mile long USB cable, but equally I could have, in this cloud, I could have opened a device in Sydney, Australia, and that would have been an unfeasible like 13,000 mile long USB cable. Um, so so that, that's, that, that's how this works. And, uh, the advantage of doing this in the cloud, of course, is that 
you've got a much wider choice of variety, uh, a variety of devices available to you. Okay, so I'm going to now um, upload this device. So upload the, the app and, and put it into debug mode. So I'm going to click on debug, and you can see there I've actually got the device there in the list of connected devices. <coughs> I'm going to click on OK. So what it's doing now, it's doing a Gradle build, and then it's installing the APK file onto the device, and it's launching the app in debug mode. So it's exactly the same as you would be doing this if you were working in an emulator. So some of you, if you guys are all experienced Android developers or iOS developers, you might be thinking, well, why don't I just carry on working in the emulator? And the answer to that question is you absolutely should carry on using emulators because that's where you're going to be, that's when you're fastest. You know, you want to work with a particular device, you want to make sure that you're cranking your code out, everything's local to your machine and you can work really quickly. But we all know that apps behave very differently in the wild on real devices than they do on emulators. And there's a different chipset for one thing. So the advantage of this is that you can work on your emulators, get to a point where you really want to, you know, you think, okay, I'm ready to push this out to the wild. And then you can come and test this on several different devices, maybe in several different locations if it's, you know, if, if it suits you to do it that way. So I've got this app launched. Uh, let me just um, zoom so we can see more of the device there. So what I'm going to do right now, as I've said, I've got a, the, the debug breakpoint set there when I click the number one key. So if I click number one, you can see there, this has sprung to life, and now we've hit the breakpoint. So I don't propose to walk you through the ins and outs of the Android Studio debugger at this point. I'm basically just going to step through the code just, just while I'm, um, you know, just so we can see the number one appearing in, in the logic there. So while I'm just doing that, are there, are there any questions from what I've, I've, I've shown you so far? because I need to click OK about a thousand times. Just talk amongst yourselves. I need to work out a slightly different path through this logic so I do less clicks. And in a moment, I'll do something very similar on the, the iOS platform. Yeah, fire away. I missed the beginning from what you said. <laughs> that um, to which platform are you connecting your device to the real device? Uh, third party uh, or is it something that is your company? No, no, yeah, Perfecto provides, we've got 14 data centers scattered around the world and we've got, we've got about 5,000 devices, give or take, um, around the world that we currently have under test for our enterprise customers. And we have a, a much more modest public cloud, which has about 150 devices in it. Um, so yeah, right now, this physical device that's on the screen right now is in London, or the outskirts of London. Although, again, I can show you one in, in Sydney. You know, at the, at the end of the day, everybody thinks that you're looking at an emulator, but you're really not. It's a digital video stream that's taken from the device. I've hit my last click there, and you can see the number one appearing in the, in the IDE there. So, so this, as I said, this gives you this large variety of devices um, to connect into. So I'm just going to disconnect that tunnel from there. Now, if you wanted to do, for example, uh, an espresso test, I've got a different one, but basically we've got this run on cloud. So I could just do the same sort of thing that in my head I've, I've clicked on that. So um, you don't need to have the dev tunnel uh, connected to do that. So essentially, what that's done, it's built a non-debug version. This is the same app, and it's pushed it up to, to, to the cloud to, to run it. So the advantage of this, I can actually open a second device. So let me just find um, a tablet here in the UK. So we've got, uh, where are we now? The Galaxy tab, there we go. So this is li literally, the, the run on Clyde is just taking the APK and it's pushing it up to the, to, to, to the devices. In fact, we're finished with this guy, so let me just close it now. Okay, so I've, I've opened a different device. This is a tablet. So again, if I, if I click on run on cloud, again, it's taking the same source code, the same UI design, building it and pushing it up and installing it to this particular uh, device. So any second now, there it is launched. And you can see this is one of the real good values of this particular run on cloud feature because this is an app that clearly has not been designed for a tablet. You know, that layout is truly awful. But that's the point. You, you might have done a great job designing a UI that works on, on a smartphone profile, but as soon as you get it to a tablet profile, it's not going to work. 
So what are your differences? You're going to have a different app. Are you going to try and find a happy medium that works on, on all the different device profiles? And this tells you that very quickly. Okay, yeah, you, you, you can do it on, on emulators again, but again, you've got this large variety of devices available to you in the cloud to be able to do that sort of test. So that's the run on cloud capability. And I say, just, just to cover those bases, because I've got five minutes left. So here we are um, in the Xcode IDE. Let's just minimize Android Studio just to get the noise out of the way. So here we are inside of Xcode. If I click on Window Devices, you can see there I've got, I've got no locally connected devices. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here to our, our web IDE. We've not yet got a plugin for Xcode. It's coming shortly. But I'm going to open my, my trusty iPhone 7. Just takes a moment to open. OK, so what I can now do, I can do the same thing again. I can launch the dev tunnel. So this is the same piece of software. So that'll just take a few, few seconds again just to initiate that connection. But there we go. There's, there's the session connected. So now if I come out of there and go back into it again, hopefully I will see the same. There we go. It's just appeared. I was just being impatient with it. So that's the device. Um, that I can now interact with. So again, it's like a locally tethered device. So those of you that are well used to using the Xcode IDE, it's a locally tethered device. You can do with it everything exactly the same way that you can, as though you had a real device literally plugged into the USB cable here. So I've got a very simple app here, and I'm simply going to do the same thing again. So I've just hit the, the, the play button, and I'm going to flip back over here so that we can see it being launched on that device. I'll just rearrange my screen so while that's doing that. So this is basically building the IPA file and it's installing the API file, so the IPA file, and it will then, as I say, launch on this particular device. I'm not going to debug this particular app. You've seen me do it once, so a debugger is a debugger. So I'll just leave that for a moment just for it to, uh, to actually launch. And there it is launching. So uh, one of the really nice things here is that we aren't dependent upon third-party ecosystems to enable us to be able to... to, to stage our devices for you to test on them before the release of a particular operating system version. So by that, for example, we're, we're going to have iOS 11 devices in our cloud probably late June, early July, if, if the last two releases are anything to go by. So we're not actually dependent upon the, like the, the Appium ecosystem or anything like that to be able to support this because we've got our own platform connectivity tier that abstracts away, if you like, the device automation from any front-end automation that you want to work with it. So that's, that's a really nice feature. And we're actually in the process as well. We've got a mixture of UI automation and XC test automation right now. We're going to go to pure, pure play XC test automation in the coming few releases. So, so that's the, uh, the, the, the run on device on the, on the Xcode side of things. So I've got three minutes left, which is fine. I've showed you what I wanted to show you, so I'll open the floor for questions. Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know if you heard that at the back, but the question was, can we actually do anything with the screen orientation? So we can absolutely do that. So if I just click on rotate device, there is the device rotated. I mean, there you go, and the app rotates as well. So so then you can, and you can interact. So for example, if I wanted to enter a meal, so this was basically a free tutorial I found on the internet for, for coding in Xcode. So I could, I could make, if I wanted, if I wanted pizza, for example, I can just use my keyboard there and then I can use the actual text injection capability to inject that text. You don't actually have to use the pop-up virtual keyboard. So there are times like, for example, pin notification or pin entry for mobile banking apps frequently use a custom keyboard. So text injection won't work for that quite rightly because it's a security issue. So there are times you need to interact with the objects for the actual digits to do that sort of thing. But we can work with custom keyboards quite happily. Any other questions? So you're all in shadow because I'm being... <laughs> Sorry, gentleman over there. Only one, because these are real physical devices. You know, so um, y you wouldn't share your own phone with somebody else at the same time because they're not designed to do that. So it's just a single connection. Okay, there's a question at the back. Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely, yes. So that's the other part of the, the platform. So we support desktop web browser testing, but we also support, if I click an open URL, let me go, I don't know, why not go to Google? Because everybody goes to Google. So google.com 
Uh, <coughs> so here that I'm on an iPhone, it's actually going to launch the Safari browser and it's going to take me to, um, to, to google.com. As I say, I'm on my local Wi-Fi hotspot, so um, in fact it might just be because I've got the dev tunnel connection. I've never done that with the dev tunnel connection active before, but what I'm going to do... Yeah, it has done it. So there we are, we've gone to Google. It's actually defaulted to google.co.uk. And my time's now up. So any last questions before we finish? If not, please come find me down at the Perfecto booth. And thank you very much for your attention at lunchtime. Thank you.